Good evening. Good evening. Tonight, the altar is set, the gifts have been prepared, and the symbols of the night are set before us. We start tonight a little bit differently than we do with our regular Sunday mornings. And oddly enough, I'm getting a phone call right now. I can feel it. Fortunately, it's only the hospital. No big deal. No, I'm um, just kidding. Um, it just starts a little bit differently. It feels a little different. It's an evening service. And, uh, and it's toward the end of Lent. And the whole idea of, of Holy Week and Passion Week is to have a little bit different feel um, in terms of worship. Um, so we, we get a little more understated and a little more somber as the week goes on, and then that will contrast, um, especially between Good Friday and Easter Sunday morning, uh, with the joy that we uh, experience and celebrate with the, the resurrection. So, as I said, uh, tonight uh, is Monday Thursday, uh, the altar is set, and we're ready for communion tonight uh, as we talk about the events in the upper room um, on, that, uh, on that Monday Thursday. The symbols of the night are set before us, and on this holy night, we remember the night when Jesus was betrayed. We remember how he demonstrated a great act of loving service by washing his disciples' feet. And we remember how Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with those same disciples, even one who would betray him. What you see today will not be here tomorrow. If you return for the Good Friday service, as we will make a transition from enjoying symbols and stuff to emptying the chancel as much as possible to reflect Jesus being taken away from his own disciples, friends, and family. When our own lives are laid bare before him, no clothing, no makeup, and no fake smile prevents him from knowing our hearts. I look at the events of Lent and Holy Week as a journey, a term that we've been using throughout, a journey we share with Christ, Revisiting where he walked, meeting the people he encountered, and understanding which events unfolded in his time. Tonight begins the triduum, the three holy days where God finished his redeeming work. And so we begin our time together this evening and the three holy days in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, When You Woke That Thursday Morning.
Let us pray. Create a clean heart in me, O God, a humble heart, a meek heart, a peaceful heart, a benevolent heart, a devout heart which does not repay evil for evil, but overcomes evil with good, which loves you above all things, thinks always about you, speaks about you, gives you thanks, delights in hymns and spiritual songs, and loves to hear your word. Amen. Our first reading is from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 14, the Passover. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be your old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roasted over the fire, head, legs, and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some of it is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. We'll sing our next hymn, Lamb of Glory. from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks 
he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you drink this bread, or eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. Our third reading is from John chapter 13, beginning with the first verse. It was before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has been, who has had a bath, needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not in one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, Not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who has sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen. 
Fourth reading, the Gospel of John, chapter 13, continuation of the previous reading. I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill the scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I am telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am he. I tell you the truth. Whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. And whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. What you are about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Dear people of God, create in me a clean heart of God, and renew a right spirit within me. The words of King David from Psalm 51. Honestly, I deliberated for a little while on letting that one line be the entire message for the night. Um, the connection to washing is obvious enough, so I thought, well, that solves that. I, I mean, the theme is washing or wash, so I think that takes care of it. The psalmist, David, was asking, to, asking God to do some heart cleaning. So I thought I was on to something for a moment. Plus, I don't know if we sit, just sit in meditation on God's word often enough. One little line, so much to unpack. Maybe, maybe we just kind of sit and think for a little bit. Have the opportunity to consider the word and the word alone. <laughs> Maybe we'll get lost in our own thoughts. Maybe we'll follow rabbit trails in our own mind with just this one thing to concentrate on because sometimes we just need a few more things to be thinking about. And if we don't have them given to us, we come up with them all on our own. Just the word. I think we do like to add things to our thoughts and ask questions about the meaning of what we're reading. And if we don't have all that, then Just sitting is good, or it can be. My wife does not like baths. The shift in the focus here. I don't know if she's ever taken one. I mean, she's not gross or anything because she likes showers and takes them. But the whole idea of just what's the quote? Sitting in your own film. Yeah, that's what she calls it. For some reason, that phrase, what she feels is going on in those moments, it's not appealing to her. I think that tells us something about what we ought to dwell on 
or in when it comes to God's word of washing, of renewal, and service. The first Holy Thursday features foot washing as an example and new command. This is where Maundy comes in. So we call this Maundy Thursday. And I can tell this to you every year for, I mean, some of you are older than I am, and you know, you, know, you may have been told this phrase many times, you maybe still don't know what Maundy is all about, you prefer to call it Holy Thursday. Maundy comes from the Latin for command, mandatum. So on Maundy Thursday, we remember the command to do for others as Christ has done for us. We also have the institution of the Lord's Supper, where Jesus tells us to remember him whenever we eat the bread and drink the cup. And when the Apostle Paul talks about this meal, we are reminded that just as Christ gave his body for us, it is through Christ that we are part of something much bigger. And we call that the body of Christ and finally, among all the things that we have to, to look at on this night, when I'm trying to simplify it, just go with that one line from Psalm 51. There are so many different symbols and things going on that we read in just our few passages from Scripture tonight, but they all happen on this same, the same night. We also have the, the sleepy disciples. We didn't talk about them necessarily, but we have the sleepy disciples in the garden, the betrayal by Judas, the denial by Peter, and the scattering of the other disciples. All events which bridge the transition from the evening of one day to the, to the night and morning of Good Friday. And while I love to say that it all starts with the physical, tangible, experiential washing of feet, any story of foot washing must begin with dirty feet, right? Otherwise, what's the point? If feet smell good or look good, there'd be no need. The dirt and the stink come first. When Jesus began washing the feet of his disciples, nobody, including Peter, uh, we get words from Peter who argue with Jesus a little bit, um, they don't argue about their need for their feet to be washed. The argument that Peter engages in was about whether or not Jesus should be the one doing it. Jesus puts that concern to rest, though, by saying, hey, this is the way it is. Either I wash you or you can go with somebody else. Not a quote, but it's pretty close. And when Jesus says that, it's not, it's, it's much more of a promise than it is a threat. Because Jesus wants to wash. He wants us to follow. And he wants to be in a close relationship with us. And he will do whatever it takes to allow that to happen. The text began, if you recall, but probably didn't, because when I looked at it, I was like, oh, that's there? Interesting. The text began by explaining that Jesus would show them the full extent of his love. It's like that's the introduction to everything that's going to follow, not just the events of Monday Thursday, but of Good Friday and Easter as well. He's going to show them the full extent of his love. He's going to get the job done. Less than 24 hours later, the Christ will complete the work of redemption, and the water of the foot bath will give way to the blood of the soul bath. And I hope you caught the pun, if not the theology. But if not, I can talk to you after the service. <laughs> I think that Michelle doesn't like the, what she doesn't like about the bath is that even though you can wash your body get the dirt off of it, the dirt that you just washed off is still kind of hanging out, still sitting nearby. You can still see it, whether it's muddy waters perhaps or a film over the top. It's gone, but not quite. On a spiritual level, it doesn't match what takes place when the blood of Jesus washes over us. In infinite mercy and steadfast love, the blood of Christ shed for us yields a clean heart and a right spirit. This is the promise. And this is the true story of being washed in the blood of Jesus. 
It removes sin. It carries it away. And you can watch it swirl and go down the drain. Gone. I don't think God wants us to spend time sitting in the filth of sins that have already been forgiven. There is joy to be found. There is peace to experience and contentment to be had. And there are other feet to wash as well. Mandatu. Not punishment or consequences, just God's way of serving and loving others through us. And now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. In the name of the Spirit of Jesus, Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that we turn from our evil way and live. We come before you, although we have sinned and deserve only your wrath, yet we flee to your mercy in Christ Jesus our Lord, who gave his body and his blood for our redemption. Lord, grant that we may ever believe and never waver. In thanksgiving, we remember and proclaim the sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we place our trust. Until his return, graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On Holy Thursday, we remember how Jesus himself kneeled down and washed the feet of the community of his disciples. He called them together so he could serve them and they could serve each other according to his example, so that they could be a community. On this Monday Thursday, we want to remember that Christ invites us to celebrate together and be servants for each other. Again and again, God calls us into this celebration of community and wellness. We pray. To you, God, Creator, we want to give our thanks always for what you have done for us. You call us into this community. As your beloved children, we are here, each and every one, called to serve each other and be part of the community of Christ. And now, O oh God, we ask that you would send your spirit upon us and on these elements, bread and fruit of the vine, so that they become your body for us which heals, forgives and makes us whole, and that we become your body for your loving and caring in this world until your kingdom comes. And we remember Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, how he had taken the bread, given thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. And likewise with the cup of wine, how he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my blood shed for you. And at this table, we are in community with Christians around the world and across time. And so we proclaim the mystery of our faith, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. This is the Lord's Supper, prepared for his people. So come all, you with strong faith and you who seek renewal, you who are here often and you who are here for the first time. We will gather together tonight at the table because of the Lord's invitation. It is God who calls us, and it is God who supplies us, and it is God's gift of himself in his body and blood. We share in this holy communion together. As we have done for quite some time, recognizing that there may be some worshiping with us in the parking lot on the north side, and some uh, in the oasis, uh, at this time, we invite those who are joining us by radio or by live stream in the Oasis to please receive now the Lord's invitation to take and eat the body of Christ.
and now take and drink the blood of Christ. And now the rest of the congregation, all you who are gathered in the sanctuary, will join together in Holy Communion, a meal of unity that connects Christians across space and time. Tonight we have a little different format for our distribution. Uh, instead of a continuous format where everybody comes up the aisle and receives the wafer from me and then the wine or juice from the elder, we will commune by tables. Uh, that means that you will be dismissed coming up the middle aisle as usual, but in your two, uh, two columns or two rows, you'll come up to the front and then you'll just come, up, come across the, uh, the front uh, step on the bottom level and stand there. There'll be eight to ten of you on this side and maybe eight to ten of you on this side and once you're all in place, we'll come by with the bread and then come by with the wine and you'll stay put until we dismiss you by table. Is that pretty clear, Randy? Are you all right with that? Thank you. It's a little different, so let's join together. <laughs>
You have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. We have enjoyed a meal, small in substance, yet great in value. Christ has given us his own body and blood to eat and drink. For now we, as his followers, his disciples, should go and serve with the same obedience to our Heavenly Father that Jesus had when he walked the earth. Tonight our service ends on the same note that Jesus' own Passover celebration ended on a journey to the Garden of Gethsemane. Matthew 26, verse 30 says, When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So we'll sing a, a couple of, of hymns, Go to Dark Gethsemane and a Garden of the Night, and then we'll depart in silence tonight. Mm -hmm. 